Hello, everyone. Happy to be here. I'm just celebrating the bull market. I hope you are as excited as I am. <laughs> so thank you for coming. I'm Dab Lyon. I'm the fourth coordinator of Gnosis. And today, I'm going to talk about a proposal to bring gas features to Gnosis. So why do we want this? As you know, both Gnosis and Ethereum has the same instant auction mechanism. And that's very spiky. Like, most of the time, Gnosis is a lucky chain that doesn't have very expensive fees, and that's good. It attracts the type of applications that, that we want, this stable value, more community-driven. But it kind of discourages them at the same time, because they rely on this ch cheap baseline that can disappear any time that, I don't know, something crazy like this DeFi or NFT crazy thing happens and everything spikes. So this spiking mechanism is OK, but it affects everyone the same way. So Let's explore what would happen if we would allocate block space in a different way, since that people perceive these spikes not equally. So our goal for this proposal is we want to expose a way that you can purchase the right into having a price guarantee and, as a derivative, an inclusion guarantee. One gets the other, because eventually everyone will be priced out except of you. So today, Gnosis implements EIP-1559, where it's really a good mechanism to expose a way for users to not have to like, think too much about price, but this only works in the short term. In the, in the, say, minutes to hours, fees can still spike very bad, and this does not satisfy our requirements from before. So the main difference between Ethereum and Gnosis and the whole thing that allows this proposal is that in Ethereum, we burn. In Gnosis, we collect. We collect into this collector vault, governance by the DAO. I think today we're not doing anything for it. One of the potential applications is to buy back GNO, so it's kind of an indirect burn. But it can be used for this purpose. So let me first give a shout out to Martin. This is his idea, block rent. I'm just extending it. And definitely, Gas Token was great inspiration. These guys allow the chain to store gas in a way that's perpetual and allows some really interesting market dynamics. But in a way, it's not optimal to what we want to do, because this token is permanent. So you have infinite competition for the same block space. You are just moving the current like spiky market to another dimension of these token holders. Not ideal. And Polkadot is doing this thing called bulk core time, which inherits a lot of these ideas that I'm going to talk today, where you can give a specific entity, person, holder of some rights, the option to have access to some sort of block space in a regular way. Um, so let's look how it's going to work. So we could build this gas option without changing the protocol at all, just with some trusted intermediary or clear house. So this is how it would work in the real world. Uh, like We could build this today just on top of the current infrastructure, but we will need someone so let's work through the thing. So you have the speculator that buys a contract with the, with the app. The app promises to buy gas at the spot price. And then these two guys have to figure it out to settle the price difference. So this last step is what requires trust, collateral, or something to make sure that this transaction happens and they don't bail on each other. But we can do better. If we change the protocol, we can have a trustless solution because the chain is aware that this option exists. So what we want is you buy the option to write like the right to purchase NGAS at some strike price during some window for a duration of time. How it's going to work? You go to this system contract, let's call it the collector contract, and you buy this NFT that gives, uh, gives you um, rights to this future contract. Every window, you can send a payload to this contract, and this contract will forward this payload to like, whoever you ask it meter and then refund you the base fee. So effectively, from your point of view, you have an, a, a base fee exemption. You only have to pay for the priority fee. So this is cool. This works. But this kind of defeats EIP-1599 in a way. The key thing you have to understand about 1599 is it's more of like psychology to the users. They have to trust that this mechanism works and that no one is gaming. Miners are not gaming, and definitely there is no like co collusion between miners and users to, to defeat this mechanism. So to prevent that, we're going to limit how much of the total block space is redeemable. To here, I'm picking 40%, but 
I really want to run some simulations and definitely study this, this problem to make sure that we are not unsafe. I mean, otherwise, uh, it's not, <laughs> not good. We can, we, can, we can break this invariant. So first version, B0 rollout. Uh, we'll start with uh, commit rebuild auction. This is a classic mechanism. It's very well understood. It's used in ENS and a bunch of other places. Like the, just to recap, the primary cell of these sorts of mechanisms is what makes them really annoying. If you have heard about execution tickets, it kind of implements something like this. But how to you design as, as like a stable and solid primary auction is really, really challenging. So something simple like commit rebuild auction should be fine. We can explore a Dutch auction but it's very immediable, and I think it can get really spicy if you have like, the mechanism that allocates who has the right to exempt the, the base fee on a mechanism that can be gamed by the same people that, that, that get these like, and, uh, features. So let's just not do that for now. Uh, we can start with some conservative parameters, so just allocate 1% of block space per feature and maybe 10, so 10% of total block space can be competing for, for, for these sections. Strikes price zero. So we don't have to figure that out. But uh, I think easily we could turn these bar contracts or make the chain aware of historical base fee prices so that the strike price is the historical base fee. It's a somewhat decent-ish approximation of the strike price and will make the system much, much more economically efficient. Because otherwise, when the app buys this feature gas contract, it has to front run all the capital of the gas that we'll have to spend through the duration of the contract, which can be a non-negligible amount. And then some rolling window here, the parameters of window and duration depends on how much total gas is competing for this. Just so you have an intuition, in the case of gas token, this rolling window is infinity, and duration is also infinity. So everyone that holds the token is competing for the same block space, and that can lead to this unwanted congestion. So again, we want to do more research on these parameters, but this is like a good, good first uh, values that, that we can uh, deploy for V0. So just to put a diagram, see how this is going to work. So you are the app. There is this running monthly auction for these NFTs. You hopefully win it. Then you get this mint NFT, which because it's an NFT, you can have like this secondary order market. So the app may not be the primary purchaser. It could, it could be some speculator, someone that understands how demand would evolve in the chain in the future and acquire this NFT. And then you as an app that come like later after this primary sale, you can acquire this, these NFTs, maybe not only for like month zero, but you can get well, like one for month zero, month one, month two, month three. And you have basically like a guarantee of a year worth of gas in a predictable uh, price. Then in every window, you send this transaction to this contract that will meter how much gas you spend and then refund you the base fee. I want to note that we try to use the ERC4337 standard for this, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. The current entry point contract met meters gas properly, so th that would be fine, but it refunds both the base fee and the priority fee, and that would break the, the, the whole architecture. But we can, we'll figure it out. We, we'll do something in the future. We'll see on the roadmap. So this version with this simple contract it's good for all these use cases. Basically, anything that does not depend on a message or sender could be used. So say a safe that's ready to be executed could use this. Like the safe team could purchase these gas features and have some assurances that they will just not bankrupt themselves if the chain goes crazy. Cause of executions, gelato network, any, any relay network would really benefit from this or could use it. And also like POAP minting, like it's the prime example. They have this constant load through all the conferences to, to mint these NFTs. So that's B1, B0. What we want to look next, uh, we can definitely change the, the block production strategy and the tester strategy such, such that we guarantee inclusion at the consensus level. So owning this NFT would not only give you this like, price discount, but it will also guarantee that your transactions are included through some window or within some conditions, which is not the case now. Second point, I think we can do this on B0, is having a higher strike price so that the system is like as, as more as economic efficient as possible, you, not asking apps to front run as, as that much capital. Uh, another feature that we inherited this from the Polkadot bull core time, if these NFTs are splittable, that's super interesting because you can have a much, much more rich secondary market where you can just buy this 1% and then split it in whatever fraction you want and then resell. 
it will allow much more expressivity of what the market wants, how much block space, at what price, and, and at what range. It will be like really interesting. Um, I'm also, I think what will be really exact, like exciting about this, this would become a prediction market for how speculators see and value uh, what's going to be the usage of Gnosis Chain one month, two months, three months, four months into the future. And last point, as I said, like the current version is not compatible with ESC for like 437 entry point contract, but it will be possible to have a slightly modified version also audited with a different address that people trust, but we can use the same user operation standards to package these uh, refundable uh, transactions. And I want to point out, I think this is a really, really interesting opportunity for Gnosis Chain because no other chain has this property of EIP-1559 collection in a way that's like credible and trustless. And this will allow Gnosis Chain to have like an edge for these type of users or applications that wish to have some like pricing stability looking into the future. Thank you so much.